Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are ready to code today. Let's go ahead and begin episode five of our Twitter tutorial series, where I'm gonna show you guys how to properly set up a user model class object to render out a dynamic list of users inside of our collection view. Uh, so pretty exciting episode, and I think you guys will learn a lot uh, in terms of how to properly use MVC to design your applications. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the Xcode IDE editor and also the similar right here. So a static list of users is uh, what's being rendered out in our collection view. And what I really wanna do is to transform that list into something that looks like this right here, which contains me at the top and Ray Wenderlich underneath. So the way to uh, do this easily and properly is to set up a user model class to hold the information for your users. And then we're going to use this object uh, and pass it to the cell so that it knows what to render, okay? So the first thing to do is to go into model, create a new file, uh, so with file right here, and then let's just call it user. So a pretty straightforward and simple naming convention uh, for our user class. And the way to define a user is to simply just say struct right there and just use a user like that. And for the fields, I'm going to say let name of string let username of string, and then finally let bio text of string. So you can already kind of tell that these three properties for user will be used to sort of render out the name here, username here, and then bio text right underneath. Okay, so some of you guys are already probably asking me why am I using a struct instead of a object right here? And the reason is because a struct kind of, it's kind of more straightforward and easy to use. Uh, the one important thing is that it automatically gives you a constructor for this struct object, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like right now. All right, so with user defined in our project, let me just build it. I'm gonna go to home data source and create a list of users in line. So the easiest way of doing this because the Xcode editor is kind of not that smart, right? Uh, I'm going to say let users uh, be of type user like so. I'm gonna go ahead and execute this block of code so that I can create my users inside of this block. And if I say let, let's say me right here, this user be of type user, and I want to try to construct this property or this class with its necessary properties, but it's not allowing me to do so because the editor is kind of silly. Okay, so the way to fix this is to just execute this block with the parentheses and now instead of here, you get these uh, constructor parameters in the autocomplete. So that's kind of how you overcome this problem with Xcode. So I'm gonna go ahead and in hit enter. And for the name, let's just say uh, string of test. And then for the username, let's just say uh, test, test, test. And then for the bio text, I'll say some, let's see, some more bio text like that. Okay, so at the very end, I want to return an array of these user objects like that now users will be set to whatever's inside of this block with those curly braces all right so good stuff and what i want to do now is i just want to comment out the words guy right here so comment out like that and uh with this words array now commented out let me see if i can build my project and see what we get so we get two errors right here and because words is no longer a property i want to now use this users guy right there and right there. So I'm gonna render out this list of users by just running the application now. And instead of seeing the static list of three users we had previously, we're only seeing one right now. So you can see the information here is still the old static information. And the question is, how do I now render out this user right here with test, 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 and this other bio information? So the easiest, easiest way of doing this is to go into the cells guy right here. And so uh, every data source cell right here inside of this LBTA components framework has access to that particular user. And the way to get access to it is just override this data source item guy and then use this did set little bit of syntax right here. And inside of here, I can just say print data source item. And I'll show you guys exactly what data source item is. Uh, inside of this bit of code. So the application is going to run, and the very first time it renders out a user, it actually prints out this bit of code right there. So it contains all the information for our user. And uh, you know, don't worry about 
how this works so much, but the power comes from this uh, bit of code right here. And uh, you know, that's the kind of the advantages of using the LBTA components framework. It's really easy to set up your cells properly. Okay, so we have this data source item and it's really a user object, obviously by the print statement. And the way to kind of use it is to first uh, downcast it as a user object. And the easiest way of doing it, this is to use a guard let statement. So guard let user equals data source the item as user like that else return. And uh, now I can set up the name and username labels like this. So name label that text equals user dot name. Uh, username label that text equals user uh, dot username and then bio text view dot text equals user dot uh, bio text right there. So let me get rid of that print statement like so and just run the application now. So what the guard statement is really doing is saying that, okay, downcast this data source item as this user guy. And if you're not able to do so, just totally return and um, just, you know, exit out of this did set function. And if it's successful in downcasting the user, uh, you know, execute the rest of the label setup code. Okay, so the application is now up and you see that the user is rendering out some of the information that we set up in the home data source guy right here. So test, 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 and some more biotext is being rendered out. So pretty good stuff. And let me now render out the proper bit of information by filling out my name like so. And what is my username? Uh, build that app and then some bio text, right? So let me just run this and see what I get inside of my user cell. So do, 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 running, running, running. And the app is up. We get my name and username and also the bio text. So what I want to do now is to show you guys how to render out the Ray Wonderlick cell inside of this list. So Ray Wonderlick is down here, right? So let's just create this other user. Uh, let Ray say user equals user and uh, name. So what is his name? Uh, Ray Wonderlick. Username is at R Wonderlick, like so. And for the biotext, let me just see how fast I can type this. Uh, I know a lot of you guys probably don't enjoy watching some guy type, but just have to do this really quickly. And tweets on topics uh, related to iPhone uh, software and gaming. Check out our conference. Okay, Let's see like that. Okay, so if I run this app right now, some of you guys can probably tell that uh, we're not going to get the list of dynamic users just yet. We're going to get that one user and we need to fill out Ray user inside of the array. So I'm going to run the app one more time and we're going to get Ray to be rendered inside of this list right there. So Ray Wonderlick is here. His information is also there. Uh, one thing that we're missing is the profile image. But first I want to fix my biotext over there. I'm going to go back to the cells file and I know the biotext is this guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my biotext to be the correct biotext. Okay. So I'm run this application now. We're going to get a list of, uh, you know, the proper information. And I want to now fix the application to show my or the proper user image as well. So the way to do that is to uh, set the image on the user object. So to, to do that, I'm going to go back to user and declare a new property for the image. And I'm going to say, let profile image be of type UI image like that. So it's going to flag me because I don't have access to UI image inside of this file. And the reason is because you need to import UI kit and all the UI uh, classes will now be available. Okay. So now that we have the profile image, I want to go ahead and set this image on each one of these user objects, okay? So it's flagging me uh, a couple of errors because I don't have the profile image in the constructor call. And so what's happening is that every time you have a struct, it automatically gives you a constructor for all four of these properties. And the constructor now looks like this instead. 
So user, let's see, let u equals user. Uh, can I get it? Okay, so this is what the constructor looks like now. So I need this final property of profile image, which I'm gonna type in manually, like so, profile image. And I'm going to use this profile image for myself. And let's see, for the ray user, let's just use profile image. And then I need to now grab Ray's profile image, which I have conveniently set up uh, beforehand. So inside of assets, I'm gonna drag in Ray's image right there. So now I have myself and Ray. And uh, that Ray image is called, uh, let's see, Ray profile image, like that. And uh, now we should be good to go. So let me just get rid of the words guy, I guess. We don't really need that comment there anymore. The code looks a lot cleaner. And now running the application, we get uh, you know myself and Ray still. So how do I use this user now that I have access to it? So inside of cells, inside of user cell, we have all this stuff here. Uh, and I'm going to just say profile image view. Let's see profile image view dot image equals user dot image or profile image. So running the app one final time, we're going to now see a list with a you know a user and his profile image inside on the left like that. So pretty useful stuff. And let me just blow it up a little bit. Okay. So I'll drag this guy in the middle, and we have Ray, we have myself, and then we have a couple of labels with the header and the footer at the bottom, right? So what, I, what do I kind of want to do now to kind of clean up the application? Well, if I tap back over to this app right here, uh, you notice how there, there are these separate separator lines between all of the cells, right? One right here, one right here, and one right here. So how do I get this separator line to show up uh, inside of my app? Well, it's pretty easy uh, to do so if I show you right now. <laughs> Let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do is include the separator between the header and these cells. So let's go to cell right here. And uh, for this header guy, so user header is rendering out who to follow, which is this guy up here. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, inside of set of views. I'm going to say separator line view dot is hidden equals false. So some of you guys are probably wondering what the heck is separator line view. Um, so inside of data source cell, uh, I've set up this separator line, which you can hide or uh, unhide very easily like that. And uh, if you go inside of separator or data source cell, there is this separator line in view here, and it's being added inside of the uh, setup views call, which is executed right there. So that's how you get this separator. And if you want to change the color to match, uh, let's see, where are you? This guy right here. You can just simply change the separator line uh, view dot background color equals some kind of color. So to get that really faint line right there, I'm going to use R of the RGB of 230, 230, and 230, which gives me a really, really faint uh, line. So I'm going to go ahead and run the app now and see what I get. So you see that very faint line right there? That is our separator line view. So likewise with the user cell, let me just copy this first. I'm going to execute all that code inside of this setup views method here and paste all of that inside. And now we're going to get the, uh, the exact same separator line view to show up for our cells. And uh, running that application now, we get these separator line views right there and right there. So something that we do have to fix is that uh, the height of all these cells yeah, they're not really dynamic yet, right? So we have to fix that later on. And one thing I want to show you guys how to do is to clean up your code uh, just a little bit, okay? So you notice how user cell is becoming quite a beast of a class, right? There's a lot of lines of code. And user header and user footer is up here. So what I typically do is I'll just create a new file. And this file will be called user cell. And I'm going to dump all that user cell code inside of this class instead. So let's take user cell, uh, cut, and then paste. Okay, awesome. So the reason why it's flagging me with these red guys is because I haven't imported LPTA components yet, which is where all of this data source cell uh, code is included. So let's see, refactoring is done. Cells is now a lot cleaner. Uh, I might 
actually go ahead and rename this as something else a little more consistent. So user header footer. And then here we go. Uh, our project is now a lot cleaner. All right, so that's going to be it for today. I uh, hope you guys learned a lot about how to set up model objects for your project. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to properly uh, size our cells to fit the dynamic text content inside of it. All right, keep on coding and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.